A person who has really tasted the sweetness of faith, they can never leave that sweetness. But as Sheikh Islam uh, said, al ma'asi barid al kufr, that sins are a means to disbelief. So the more we engage in sins, it is it, it can become to us uh, so we become so sinful that we may perhaps believe that sinfulness is become lawful for us. And this is how a person can leave the fold of Islam. And we ask Allah to protect us from that evil. Some of the lessons we gain from this condition. Firstly, loving Allah and being thankful to Him is expressed by obedience to His commands. Number two, true knowledge of Allah requires love and submission to Him. Thirdly, true faith is expressed by loving what Allah loves. Fourth, love is a condition of the testimony and faith, and without love for Allah, one cannot enter the fold of Islam. Number five, hate negates love, and one who has hatred in his heart towards Allah or the Prophet wasallam is not a Muslim. Sixth, some of the people who commit polytheism love Allah. However, they ascribe partners with Him as well, or they love others with him or even more than him. And the last thing that we gain from this condition is that the love mentioned here is unconditional love, which is only reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The natural love one has for his or her family and friends is limited and based upon the natural mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed between his creatures. The next condition of the testimony of faith <clears throat> is strict adherence, meaning obedience. The testimony of faith requires one to testify that they will strictly adhere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands and orders as they were revealed in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصرون تنصرون. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, and turn in repentance and in obedience with true faith to your Lord and submit to Him in Islam before the torment comes upon you, and then you will not be helped. Al Khurasi says about this verse, that is submitting to Allah alone and Islam. It is submitting to Allah in His oneness and obedience to Him in His commands. This is the main point. And being away from polytheism and its people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, and who can be better in religion than one who submits himself to Allah, does good deeds, and follows the religion of Ibrahim. And Allah took Ibrahim as an intimate friend. Submission to Allah's commands and calling to Islamic monotheism is the methodology of the prophets and messengers. Alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. Therefore, the testimony of faith which is the key to entering Islam requires one to strictly adhere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands by submitting entirely to Him based upon knowledge, love, and acceptance and to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, none of you truly believes until his desires conform to what I came with. Shaykhana, Shaykh Abdul Musin al-Abbad <coughs> mentioned that this hadith shows the obligation of following the sunnah and that people differ in their levels of faith. Strict adherence to the monotheistic creed and the meaning of the testimony of faith 
is an obligation upon every Muslim. And this is a part of complete faith. Faith fluctuates from time to time and from one individual to another. However, even those who possess weak faith must strive to adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whosoever submits himself to Allah while he is one who performs good deeds, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold. And what is that trustworthy handful? There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And to Allah return all matters for decision. Shaykh Abd al-Rahman al-Sa'idi mentions that submission to Allah has several possible meanings here. He said, doing all acts of worship, worshiping Allah with complete fear and reverence by knowing that He sees all that you do, and following His commands and those of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Some of the benefits we attain or we gain from this uh, condition is that the testimony of faith requires a willingness to be obedient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's commands with the other conditions already mentioned Also obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's commands it increases one's faith and disobedience de decreases faith also, uttering the testimony of faith is not sufficient to enter the fold of Islam and remain Muslim without good deeds and following the obligatory duties. Also, we gain from this, faith is comprised of the utterance of the testimony of faith, belief in the heart, and good deeds. And finally, disobedience or leaving the obligations Allah has legislated for us negates obedience to his commands. Moving on to another critical condition for the testimony of faith, which is sincerity, having ikhlas, ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's countless verses in the Quran and authentic a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would illustrate for us the importance of having sincerity. Sincerity in all that we do. And sincerity means sincerity to Allah, for Allah. Doing what we do for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Loving Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone. And being obedient and directing all worship to Allah, Tabarak Wa Ta'ala. Sincerity is the seventh condition of the testimony of faith. Sincerity to Allah in all of one's actions and deeds is an important part of having them accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if one is not sincere or truthful in their testimony, then testifying will have no benefit. There are countless stories of people uttering the testimony of faith during hardships, earthquakes, and disasters. And then after they are delivered from their trial, they say, I was joking, or I did it out of fear or I'm not ready to practice yet. So sincerity to Allah is a condition for the testimony of faith. And it should not be uttered in jest, meaning jokingly, or to please someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينُ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُكِيمُوا صَلَاءَ وَيُتُوا زَكَاءَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةَ Allah Taala says, "Fi kitabi al karim and they were commanded not, but that they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone, abstaining from ascribing partners to Him, and perform the prayer and pay the alms tax, and that is a straight religion. That ayat is so powerful and gives us." It, 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 it illustrates for us the importance of Tawheed. That's what the people from before us were ordered with. That's what we're ordered with. Be sincere to Allah. Be sincere in your testimony of faith. Ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all for Allah. This is, why we, this is who we worship. This is who, who we do our actions and deeds for. We do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So have sincerity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Related to this verse in Surah Al-Bayyana, uh, Al Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah said, <clears throat> they, the Jews and Christians, 
were ordered in the Torah and the Bible to simply be sincere monotheists by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily Allah has prohibited the hellfire from whoever says that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, seeking Allah's pleasure only. Allahu Akbar. In all of these ahadith that we've mentioned regarding the shahada, it shows us, and this, it, this is incredibly important for us as Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, to realize that the Quran, for example, explains the Quran. If you have a verse in the Quran that's general, you'll find a verse that has tafsil, that has details, which explains it further. And then if you don't find an exact tafsir for that verse, then we go to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And from there we go to the, to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. This is the minhaj or the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah in understanding the, the text. And what we have here, what's very important, in many of these ahadith that we've mentioned, they give us, we, we, we don't just take those hadith that say, the one who utters la ilaha illallah enters Jannah. That is true. That's what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And there's no denying that. But we also go and look further into the sunnah and we'll see other hadith which give us more details to show. For example, the hadith we just mentioned where the Prophet sallallahu said, Verily Allah has prohibited the hellfire from whoever says, There is no God worthy of worship except Allah, seeking Allah's pleasure alone. So that shows us the sincerity. That shows us that sincerity is a condition of la ilaha illallah. It's not simply that you can just be out and about and you tell someone, Hey, utter this testimony and then they are, they're Muslim. No. They have to have some conditions. They have to know what they're uttering. They have to distance themselves from shirk. They have to distance themselves from what they were upon before. If they worship Jesus والسلام, before, then they have to distance themselves. They can't say, oh, I'm a Muslim and Jew. I'm a Muslim Christian. As we have people, even in this day and age, we have people on such misguidance that even they uh, utter this testimony. That they say that they are, in fact, a Catholic Muslim. Because they like so much of Islam, but they don't want to give up Catholicism. So then they, they believe that they can combine the two. That shows that they have total ignorance of Islam, and they haven't entered the fold of Islam. Because they don't have sincerity to Allah. And they don't have knowledge of Allah, and of the testimony of faith and what it entails. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimullah ta'ala said, The slave continues to be upon good. As long as when he speaks... He speaks for the sake of Allah. And when he does a deed, he does it for Allah. That's sincerity. We, we're so weak. May Allah forgive us. May Allah help us to be sincere and to have this sincerity and not call to ourselves, not call to our group, not call to our sect, not call to our madhab, but call to Kitabillah, wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and embrace Islam fully and in totality. Some of the lessons that we gain from this testimony of faith, this last uh, testimony, which is sincerity. Uh, one of them, one of the, the lessons that we gain is that sincerity is one of the conditions for the testimony of faith, as well as a condition to have one's good deeds uh, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we all are hopefully aware that there are two conditions to have your deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first one, is that you're, you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that your worship is sincerity for Allah and to Allah. That's sincerity. That's ikhlas. So the first one is that you're sincere to Allah if you want your deeds accepted. And the second one is that it conforms to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's, this is not the time to discuss all the evidences for that. But it's simple for us to know the, some of the evidences we mentioned. For example, in Surah Al-Bayanah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ That we did not cam command them except to, uh, to worship Allah alone with sincerity. That's ikhlas. And to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's many ahadith, but there's many ayats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَعْتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَأَعْتِيُوا رُسُولُ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, and follow Allah and follow His Messenger. 
So those are conditions to having your deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second uh, benefit we gain from this uh, condition of the testimony of faith is that polytheism negates sincerity to Allah. And as it is doing an act of worship, or, or the reason why, is because it's doing an act of worship for other than Allah, or to other than Allah, meaning that worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As some people, they will go to the graves and they supplicate. Ya so-and-so, oh so-and-so, please help me. Please give my wife a child. Please increase my risk. I don't have employment. They go to the dead. Some people go, they make a, a, a journey to the Prophet sallallahu masjid, not for the sake of visiting the masjid, which is mishroor, which is from the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu but they go only for the sake of giving the salams to the Prophet sallallahu not just to give salams to the Prophet sallallahu but they go to supplicate to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is... This is not from Islam. This contradicts Islam to go uh, to supplicate the, to the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet wasallam ordered us to worship him, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, not to worship him. So, salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. And the companions of the Prophet wasallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they didn't call the Prophet wasallam after he died. Salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. And the Tabi'een, they didn't supplicate to the Sahaba, and they didn't supplicate to the Prophet. ﷺ, nor did the Itba'a Tabi'een. So we don't find this. We find this the, that people innovated this later in the religion to where they began to violate sincerity, violate this condition by worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by supplicating, by making tawaf around graves, by sacrificing, and doing these types of Worship to other than Allah. I would like to end this uh, lecture with some very important benefits from our scholars. Some questions that were posed to some of our scholars and some of the answers that they gave because the scholars are the Warath al Anbiya. They are the inheritors of the prophets. They are the ones who help preserve the religion of Islam in its pristine form. So it's uh, an obligation upon us to seek knowledge from the scholars and get guidance from the scholars to know how to practice Kitab Allah with Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how to understand it properly and the Minhaj Salaf Asali to follow the, the, the pious predecessors and at the, uh, at the Rasihim, a Sahaba, at the head of them is a Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. Our Shaykh, Shaykh Ubaid uh, al-Jabri in Medina Hafizullah Ta'ala was asked, if a non-Muslim is on his deathbed and a Muslim is encouraging him to accept Islam, is it necessary for him to practice all the conditions of La ilaha illallah? The Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Ubaid replied, how can he practice all the conditions of La ilaha illallah when he's preparing for death? This is holding him responsible for something he was not ordered with. If a non-Muslim is close to death and he utters the testimony of faith, meaning the shahadatain, it is witness and it is witness that he pronounced it, then he will benefit from it. This is what is apparent and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guided us to uh, when he salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi said to his uncle Abu Talib, say la ilaha illallah a statement and I will bear testimony before Allah that you are a believer. So the one who has originally, or the, the one who was originally a non-Muslim will benefit from the shahadatain if he utters it on, on his deathbed. However, one who had become a non-Muslim through apostasy will not benefit from the shahadatain until he distances himself from his apostasy and repents to Allah. Our Shaykh, Shaykh Saeed bin Halil al-Amr of Hail, Hafizullah Ta'ala was asked the same question. And he replied, no, it is not necessary in the beginning to meet all the conditions of La ilaha illallah. However, if he enters into Islam and knows the meaning of La ilaha illallah, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and he must understand the categories of Tawheed. If he knows that Allah is the, one, the only one worthy of worship, 
and that those taken as gods other than him are false. And Allah the Almighty said in this regard, that is because Allah, he is the truth, and that which they invoke besides him is false. Then this person after uttering the shahadatain enters the fold of Islam. On the other hand, the one who pronounces the shahadatain but does not understand its meaning or what nullifies it or continues to be upon his previous religion or grave worship or continues to be of those who seek assistance from other than Allah does not uh, uh, or intercession uh, does not benefit from saying la ilaha illallah al allama bin baz rahimahullah ta'ala was asked about the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam who said whoever says it meaning the shahadatain will enter paradise the questioner asked i would like to know if it is sufficient to say it uh, once in one's lifetime or many times or on one's deathbed or any time and will it benefit the major sinner while he is still committing a uh, major sin? Please give us benefit and may Allah increase you in your benefit. The Shaykh said, if a slave says La ilaha illallah and bears witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah with truthfulness and faith, then worships Allah alone, does not supplicate with him the dead or stones or idols or stars or anything else, but instead worships him, the Almighty alone, believing in his messenger and bearing witness that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was truthful to the Quran and the Sunnah. Then he dies upon this without major sins, rather he becomes Muslim and takes the shahadatain and dies, then he is from the people of paradise. As for if he was a major sinner and he died with something from the major sins like fornication or drinking alcohol or disobedience to his parents or severing the ties of kinship, then he is at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. If he wills, the sinner will be forgiven. And if he wills, he will enter the hellfire and be punished according to the degree of his sins. Then he will be taken out of the hellfire and placed in paradise according to the saying of Allah, the majestic, the most high. Verily, Allah does not forgive the one Forgive uh, the one who associates partner with him, and he forgives whosoever does other than that. The committee of the major scholars in Saudi Arabia were asked, if a non-Muslim enters Islam, should he utter the shahadatain or take the ritual bath first? They responded, utter the shahadatain first, then he should purify himself for prayer, and it is recommended that he take a bath because the Prophet ﷺ commanded some of his companions with that when they entered Islam. This is and illustrates for us the importance of the testimony of faith and the seriousness of knowing, of having knowledge of the conditions of the testimony of faith for those people who are non-Muslim and for those people who are Muslims so that way we do not do those things which violate the testimony of faith. And those things which take us out of the fold of Islam, وَعِيَاذٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept all of our good deeds and bless all of our scholars, all the scholars of Islam and all of those who call to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with guidance and bless uh, our sittings to be places of benefit where the angels surround and then the, the angels will mention these gatherings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and forgive us and grant us his continued mercy, grace and favor. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere and bless those who helped facilitate this opportunity to speak about the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala kitabillah and minhaj salaf salih May Allah bless them to everything which pleases Allah and forgive them for any mistakes that they may fall into. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for, any, for all of our mistakes. And anything that I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any and all mistakes were from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.